Hello and welcome everyone, thank you for tuning in, Bulldog Crash coming to you live from Sanford University. Now what we're going to be doing today real quick is we're going to go over some of the things it takes to start an organization. Not only start an organization, but start an organization at your university or your high school. I've had a lot of requests on how do I do this, I wish I could do this, I want to do this, but we're going to get into it today. So we're starting a new series called How to Start Your or that simple here. Now, one quick thing is that you need to realize that your school is an entity in and of itself. So we're going to go to uh, Sanford real quick. This is my university. We do not officially have an organization. So there's two ways at your college you can start an organization. Uh, one way is to go through a, uh, a student organization would be actually through, um, uh, what is it, Orgline? No, yeah. no, it's not .com, it's just Sanford College. All right, so there's two ways to do it. One is through, like, your actual school, and one is through a student, you know, student organization. If you're through a student organization, then Org Saint, that's what I'm looking for. If you're through like Org Saint, Sanford University. So here I am, uh, community of Sanford gamers is right somewhere. Sanford Gamers. So this is what Bulldog Esports is a part of. We are a branch of the community of Sanford Gamers, and this is kind of how we exist. Now, ooh, that's tomorrow. And so we'll attend. Yes, I will attend. So what you do is you have your community or an org that your school start up and you have to go through SGA and you start a constitution. You have all these different things and you just kind of roll with it like that. Um, and that, that's one way. Now there's restrictions for starting a organization through SGA or through your university like for us. Uh, the reason we partnered with them instead of going it alone Oh, I apologize. It was because starting with an existing organization, we got funding a little bit quicker, and we got to get into kind of the, the meat of uh, being a part of an org a lot faster. If you start on your own, there's university requirements as in how many people you can have, or how many people you have to have. Your, so for us to start Bulldog Esports as its own standalone organization, we have to have an X percentage of the total population of our university. We have to have been in existence for three years before we can get funding, and so on and so forth. And so it just wasn't, uh, just wasn't uh, ideal for us. So if you want to start, what you need to do is you need to contact your student organization director and see what it takes to start in a student organization and what those requirements are. They're usually at uh, Student Life or Student Organization or even the SGA office at your university can help you do that. Now, if you're at a high school, what you need to do is you need to find a teacher sponsor, someone who's uh, interested in helping this get off the ground. You might want to check out, and you can find teacher sponsors anywhere Oh, holy smokes. Um, you can find teacher sponsors anywhere. Some of the best people are economic teachers or um, research technology professors, people who are in you know, the computer side of things. They're usually really on board for esports. Uh, one quick great tip is that esports helps raise uh, GPAs. And you can get scholarships to college now for it. So there's, there's kind of a tip there. Now, 
that's kind of how to start an esports org. Very brief, very rough, not very broken down at all. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Organizations, here we go. So you just start an org, you log in, and you're all with it. And that's kind of how, how it goes on the college level. Now, say you have an organization already made. I remember one person had said, I'll go to Twitter. They said that they have an organization, and they're really pumped and excited about it. Here it was. They said, well, we got our... Collegiate Esports branding approved by our administration, but we can only use their approved vendors. Ugh. That can be a big letdown, and I understand what you mean. Getting them to go through your vendors, that's what call it schools want. So the idea, there's two good, there's a positive and a negative to that. The positive is school says, yes, we'll brand, and we will pay for your supplies, which is awesome, meaning that you don't have to pay for stuff. However, they only want to send money to people on their approved vendor list and purchasing. And the reason for that is they don't want to be they don't want to be spending money to illegal activities or anything. These people, they know who they are, they're in their accounting books, it's really easy to buy from them and get it on, and there's no questions about it because they're approved. They're approved to do dealings with the university. The university if it turns out that the university's been buying shirts from sweatshops in India, they're in trouble. So yes, it seems like that's a huge letdown, but it's not. Because there is a there is a there's a light. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. The light is if you can get whoever, if you can go out and find a supplier or vendor you want to supply you with, you get them to request to be a vendor. And it's super simple. Stanford University, again, my my college, kind of tells you their hours. You go through what they hold on inventory, you know, all this other stuff. Boom. Boom. Things to remember when requesting new vendors. To ensure vendors are added into our system in a timely manner, please complete as much of the form as possible. Uh, be sure to include your contact information at the bottom. And look, it tells you who to contact directly. So we click this, and look, there you go. So what you would need to do is you need to get your school sponsor to find this form for your university or your high school and fill it out. For your high school, it would be a school district. So if we went to this is a school district that I went to back in Texas, you'd go to so literally when you're looking for it, you want to look for it's not going to be in students or schools or anything. It's going to be in like the higher ups. Look for words like purchasing. Financial, uh, admin, um, resources might work. Uh, asbestos, Ooh, yum, JK. So this is literally how I do advertising opportunities. That's we're getting close. We're getting close. So business. There we go. So this is going to be under business services, and we have purchasing and vendor information. So this is vendor information, bids and proposals. Boom. So we we basically found what we were looking for. So if it's under yeah, so look, there's there's the information we need to to solicit to this high school, school district, and the same thing applies to all schools. So you got to go out and find it. I went in department, found business services and bids, and we went to bids and proposals, and they'll post up here. So they're a little bit different, but for a university, they're going to list it out there. So if you find that, say, for, for us, like Bulldog Esports, Pharma Centrum, makes great stuff and they do like this which is that or that or that or that or 
this right here, which is great stuff. Like, look at this hoodie. Ooh, look at that hoodie. Look at that hoodie. Now, you could also get a Nike wrap. I know most most schools are already sponsored by a Nike wrap because Nike is just the god of sports wraps. So, you can get this stuff. You can customize something with a Nike wrap and have Nike jerseys. It'd be Nike and it'd be your esports team. So, you could do that. But if you want something like Arma Centrum, who's an amazing brand, I believe that they also do Phase. Uh, let's go find out. I think they do Phase. Most of those. Yeah, Phase Clan, SK Gaming, Bulldog Esports. So, they do a bunch of big stuff. If you want to get jerseys from them, you'd go to Contact. And you'd fill out this stuff and you'd be like, hey, listen, we want to build kind of a, a jersey combo. However, I need you to work with my school. Can you apply? Get on their vendor list. And then I'll have my contact work with your contact and look at all the different designs y'all can get. Y'all can even get flags. So that's how you'd have to do it. That's how it's done for getting a vendor added to your school. And from there on, it is easy. So recap. What you want to do is, you, if you're starting an org, contact your student organization office. Try and get see if you can start a student organization for gaming. That way you can get a movement. The biggest thing is that if you're at a university and you don't have a student organization for gaming, it's going to be hard to get people on board. But if you start an organization, then people know this is official. This is real. Come here. You'll be drawing people in. You'll be sucking in the ocean of gamers at your university. And once you do that, you'll have leaders step up. You'll have entrepreneurs step up. You'll have people who gamers step up. And then you'll find that it's actually a great culture. And that's when it really starts to blossom here. Um, at Sanford, we're relatively small. But we do have good gamers. And it's still working. I'm still still working on my end and get things to blossom like such. Uh, the biggest thing here, though, is to know that it doesn't happen overnight and that it will take time, and sometimes it's hard. But if you do it through the right channels and you do it the right means, you can do it. Make sure you're not, like, claiming. I cannot claim Sanford University's Bulldog Esports, but I can say we're part of Sanford University's community of Sanford Gamers. Bulldog Esports part of the community of Sanford Gamers is the community of Sanford Gamers is connected to Sanford University. Bulldog Esports has it. So, that's just kind of a rundown for that. Thank you for tuning in. If you have more questions, leave them in comments. I'll make another video kind of explaining it. And that's about that. If you go to the Esports is Your Sport website, there's actually a breakdown of how Esports, professional Esports works. Uh, with an entire, entire graph, which is a phenomenal, like I took forever to make a thing, so we're going to go, and there's a, a video, so here's our, our website, you can sign up and subscribe for new updates, but look, you have developers of the game, you have sponsors, you have you, sports organizations, and how it all kind of mixed together, from even just you as a player, are you as buying team gear, buying tickets, buying product, the developers making games, to teams and players? So that's kind of how, how that goes. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, Bulldog Crash. Be here today, but I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.